we're on to that uh, conversation that I want to go right into. We've been talking about irrigation, of course, earlier on on the show. But joining me now from the National Irrigation Board, I do have a Wambui Newtu, and she is the National Irrigation Board um, Deputy General Manager. And of course, we've also got Deputy General Manager for Research, Planning and Strategy. That's Vincent Kabuti joining me. So we're going to be talking about irrigation. And I would like to, of course, welcome you onto the set. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so let's begin with the fact that, you know, the government actually invests about 9 billion shillings every year on ir into irrigation systems. And they've been doing this for the past decade. However, we still find that the education when it comes to irrigation for farmers, for many people who are interested in farming is still lacking. So what, what can we do to, first of all, address that? Wambui, you can take that for me. Well, thank you so much uh, for having us on board. It is true that uh, the government has heavily invested on irrigation in the country. And uh, you also realize that uh, about 80 to 89 percent of Kenyan land is Asao. That is, it is in arid and semi-arid areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the government has made uh, big strides because where we are right now, about 26 percent of uh, arable land is already now under irrigation. And uh, as you have said, Kenyans need more information on how to do uh, agri agriculture and how to use irrigation. Mm -hmm. Because you realize that irrigation is a good solution to food, food and nutrition security in the country. And um, what, why we need to invest in irrigation is because you see in Kenya what happens, there's a lot of rain at some point, yes. and then suddenly there is no rain. Mm -hmm. And crops need rain, you know, I mean they need water for quite a long, a long period of time. So um, what irrigation does is to give water to the crops at the right time mm -hmm. and in right amounts so that uh, the agriculture can be sustainable. So I know the Ministry of Agriculture, that is not under National Irrigation Board because our mandate is to give water. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the ministry is also engaging farmers, training them on different ways of utilizing rainwater and also irrigation water and uh, how to take care of the crops, you know, training people how to farm and how to use modern technology. It is something that is already happening. Okay, yeah. so of course you as the director for the National Irrigation Board have yeah. a lot of insights and information into your aspects as your mandate and as well as what needs to be done. But moving on from the education for the farmers, um, you know, we, we want to understand what is the current irrigation situation in Kenya. And so we can have just, you know, more clarification from you after we've, we've talked about this on the show already. So we want to know where do we stand when it comes to irrigation right now in the country. And uh, Vincent, you can probably take that one. Oh, thank you very much for having us. Um, basically, what I can say is that Kenya, we have about 40 million acres that is arable. Mm -hmm. And out of this, with the, with, the, with the available water resources, the way it is right now is that we can get up to 2 million acres. And then out of that 2 million acres, we, as, a, as a nation, we've developed uh, 510,000 acres, mm -hmm. out of which we have 189,000 for in the private sector. We have about 250,000 under the what we call community managed education scheme. And then under public education schemes, we have about 60, 61,000 acres. Okay. Our public education schemes are the most common ones, the ones we used to study in GHC. We have uh, Moya irrigation scheme, Moya Taba irrigation scheme, we have Pekera irrigation scheme, uh, Bura irrigation scheme, Hola, and then there's Ahero, Westcano, and Bunyana irrigation schemes. Mm -hmm. And those ones are in Western Kenya and they grow primary uh, rice crop. Um, we've seen there is quite, quite the, the drive in developing community managed irrigation schemes because when you look at our land and uh, there's, we are, we are going, there's no likelihood of doing public irrigation schemes because government no longer acquires land for irrigation development. So now it's, it's all about partnership with our farmers and you yes. develop irrigation infrastructure on their land, then they use, utilize this irrigation infrastructure to enhance crop production. Okay. So um, currently we can say we are at about 25% of the entire irrigation potential, but when you look at it in terms of the arable land, we are at about 3 to 4%, which is 
common in sub-Saharan Africa, but it's something that we need to really invest in and make a difference. So, of course, climate change is a big part of the entire situation and studying the weather patterns and things like that as well. And when we talk about, you know, food security now, let's talk about food security. And, of course, it's part of President Uhuru Kenyatta's Big Four Agenda, Kenyatta's Big Four Agenda. He wants to ensure that, you know, we are a food secure nation. But when it comes to that, um, dams are very important, like we were talking a little bit before we began the interview, that they're important in being able to control the amount of water that the crops get so that, like you said, you know, when there's massive rainfall and there's drought, they don't suffer. But one of the projects that has been in the limelight recently, especially in the news, is the Agalana Kulalu model farm. So we did see that the, you know, the project has stalled now and the company, the Israeli company, I believe, Green Arava, that uh, supposedly has been paid that 5.9 billion shillings already, is not... Um, actively, you know, pursuing this project now. So where do we stand on that? And I would like you to tell us. Yeah, the Galana Kulalu uh, food security project is now at 85% complete. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, we are having problems with the Israeli company, as you've said, the Green Arava company that was, uh, that won the tender mm -hmm. to develop the farm has now stopped uh, working on it because they are demanding too much money before they even implement. And as, I, as NIB, we can only pay for work done. Mm. We cannot pay for projects that have not uh, been, been, been worked on. So that is a, a small standoff we are having with the Green Arava company. But uh, we are already consulting the AG because this particular project touches even on uh, issues of relationships between Kenya and Israel because it, it had really attached to trading for Kenyan youths. Mm. You know, the, there was a program for training of Kenyan youths in, in Israel still attached under this project. So we want to handle it uh, in the best way possible. So we are waiting upon the Attorney General to give us advice on how we can handle, you know, the contractor. But uh, I want to assure Kenyans that there is no money lost in this uh, project. It is already 85% complete okay. and we only need uh, very li like uh, 2 billion mm -hmm. to now complete the, to complete the project which has not been paid to so. Green Arava. So if we bring in another company to continue with the work, it will be complete and we will start enjoying the fruits. Okay, so like yes. you said, you do not give the money until, of course, the project is at completion. But you yes. did give that 5.9 billion, which was 80% of the agreed for amount. The, for the completed 85%. Okay, you know so you, can you pay always this pay amount before the works. completion or after? What, what happens, you can always pay certain amounts, you know, under certificates, you know, mm -hmm. measured works. Yeah. If a contractor goes a certain percentage, maybe 20%, you pay for the completed 20%. So you paid them if for they the go completed again, 80%. We paid for only the completed. Okay. The undone works, we have not paid any amount of money. Yes. So like you said, you've completed 85%. Here's only your 15% money. is remaining. What's remaining, if you get another contractor to finish, you'll pay them the remaining yes. and it will be finished. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for clearing that up. But also, you know, when you, when you get another contractor to come in now, mm -hmm. it takes time for them to assess, for them to get into that system because it's not just, it's not all textbook. It doesn't all have the same template, right? They have to come, mm -hmm. start, reassess. So have you found any others that you're already, um, you know, getting on board? No, given that uh, we are guided by procurement laws in Kenya, mm -hmm. and there was already a contract signed with Green Arava, mm -hmm. we cannot just stop a contract without consulting different government firms, because as I told you, it touches on even international relations. So we are waiting for guidance mm -hmm. from the Attorney General. Once we get the guidance, even from Treasury, we can all go ahead and terminate the contract. But uh, before termination of a contract, you have to really try and arbitrate and see if you can agree with the, with the continuing contractor. But if we cannot agree totally, we will then stop it and bring in another contract. So there has, of course, been some back and forth, we believe, in terms of communication yeah. between you and yeah. them. Um, are they open to conversation? Are they open to this arbitration you talk of? Well, it, it's provided for in the contract, so we'll, 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 we'll exhaust all the avenues that have been provided for in the contract. And uh, then if this is not workable, then and also depending on the advice of the National Treasury and the AG, then you'll be able to make progress. But as you mentioned about if you bring a new contractor mm. on board, 
then that becomes the basis of uh, of the assessment or setting the criteria for getting this contractor. They have to demonstrate that indeed they have capacity mm. to implement this project within the period that we have set. So okay. they have to really demonstrate that they have the technical capacity in terms of in terms of uh, skills, in terms of manpower, and also financial capacity and equipment. So that at the end of the day, you don't you don't get to belabor so much on mm. getting the project starting again, and. That is the good thing about a procurement law. You mm -hmm. ask for a contractor with certain capacity, you get contractor with that capacity. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for clarifying that, where we are in this project and how we're moving forward. But away from that situation now, um, of course, I, I want to hear more from you on the uh, initiatives that are being put in place to address irrigation water shortage. And uh, Vincent, if you can avail mm -hmm. us with that. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we, as, as National Education Board, we are carrying out several in initiatives. Mm. One of the most transformative projects is uh, what we are calling Water for Households. We are providing uh, water harvesting facilities at household level, okay. harvesting up to 1,000 to 3,000 cubic meters of water. And this increases access to water for farmers, in, especially in the dry areas. Um, then the other one is we are looking at also existing water pans and dams spread all over the country. Mm -hmm. and. These are facilities that were done by government a long time ago. This is land that is available. So you just go in, uh, rehabilitate, increase the capacity so that you increase the water storage capacity. Then you are going to organize communities around those, around those water plants so that they are able to utilize this for production. It's one of the, the most interesting ways of getting water to farmers in arid areas where you don't have, where you don't have rivers flowing. And then lastly, which is a very which requires quite a big commitment from government is doing large dams. Mm. And indeed, there is no single nation of this all that has grown in terms of irrigation development without uh, investing in large dams. And now, uh, with the current uh, climate change uh, situation, we really need to invest in, uh, in creating more space, creating more storage uh, capacity so that during floods, you, you get to store that water, and then this water is used during droughts. But it faces quite a bit of challenges. We, uh, we know, number one, it's, it's highly capital intensive, so we require quite a, uh, a lot of money to do these projects. And then uh, followed by that, the, the land issue. Now, mm -hmm. land tenure issue, sometimes the land can become too, uh, too expensive or too emotive for, to, to deal with the people who will be completely affected by that project. A case in point is like a project like Moya has taken for it to now come, the Diba Dam, for it to come to fruition. Mm. It has taken like 20 years to clear the land issues. But now finally we are there and the project, the, the implementation is going on well smoothly. So, okay. And with that, we know uh, Moya Irrigation Scheme, once we do the Badam, which is 50 million cubic meters of water, we'll be able to increase to, to increase the area of irrigation from 26,000 to, to that 5,000 mm -hmm. and indeed support double crop. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, increasing production of rice from about uh, 70,000 to 160,000 okay. metric tons. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, because of our time limitations, I'll just, I'll just quickly ask you to comment very briefly on uh, the um, Irrigation Bill 2017 that has been, of course, in the works. It's still not yet out of Parliament. We're still in that uh, situation. But it will transform the National Irrigation Board, like you said, to the National Irrigation Authority now. And um, what, what, what do you see, um, what do you project would be the effects of you having that transformation? What is one of the key major things that you hope to achieve with, with that transformation? Well, I think uh, the National uh, the Irrigation Bill 2017 has been sitting in the Senate, but we are hoping that uh, it shall be passed uh, as soon as possible, now that Parliament has already uh, come back from recess. And uh, the best thing that will happen is that the NIB will be given full mandate to take over irrigation, as has always been, although there was a small conflict with the new constitution, mm -hmm. because part of irrigation was uh, now put into county governments. So the irrigation bill is coming now to clarify on okay. the roles of the national government and the roles of, of the county governments in terms of irrigation. But uh, I don't know if you, if, if um, I have a chance to comment on, you know, the impact of irrigation on the big four, Yes, and yes, please do, yes, just as we wrap up quickly. Uh, as the big, four, the big Four agenda has agriculture as one of the main uh, agendas. And you cannot speak about agriculture if you do not speak about irrigation. Mm. Because irrigation is, is the best way 
uh, to to you Facilitate know achieve uh, yeah achieve uh, food security and uh, we are doing many projects we are even doing small household uh, projects mm -hmm. that are impacting directly on on small scale farmers because you realize we have very big projects you know for dams and other expanded irrigation projects but we somehow forget the small farmers mm -hmm. who contribute a lot to the to the food security yes so we are also doing household plans that are uh, being implemented countrywide mm -hmm. where farmers can now have a strain water and utilize it uh, on their farms. Okay. This is one of the main projects we are doing and right. you know we are also uh, doing it together with the county government. Okay. So it will really help in achieving the big four agenda on food and nutrition security in the country. Okay, thank you so yeah. much both for joining me and for of course uh, you know giving us some in-depth information on a lot of issues surrounding this um, and uh, matters irrigation. Thank you. Thank you so much. You so much. Well that was the director for the National Irrigation Board Wambui Nutu as well as Vincent Kabuti, the Deputy General Manager for Research Planning and Strategy at the NIB. And we've been talking irrigation all through today on Business Today. I'm hoping that you gain some insight into that and information that can help you forward as well. Of course, do stay with us for our subsequent bulletins right here on KTN News. My name is Malika Kazia. Have a great afternoon.